Welcome to the Essentially You podcast again, John Asaraf. How are you doing today? I am doing amazing. It's always beautiful to see your smiling face. As I mentioned before, your pendant is stunning. Thank you so, so much. One of our, one of our dearest friends, Jen Hoody, gave this to me as a gift. Oh, nice. Yeah, as a birthday gift. So we, you, you know, this is your second time on. And the reason why I'm having you on again is that I cannot tell you how powerful of a conversation we had. It was actually during the pandemic where we were having this conversation about how we not only can we shift our mindset, but if we can focus on shifting our brain, we can change so much about how we operate in the world, whether it is the career we have, the relationships we're in, the income that we make, the, you know, the passions that we have, we, it really opens the door to endless possibilities. Would you agree with that? I mean, yeah, I mean, as a behavioral neuroscience researcher and somebody that tries to understand not the plastic brain better, but my own brain better, uh, I'm fascinated with how powerful of a, you know, an organism, biocomputer we all own and how little most people know about their own brain and how it determines what you think, how you feel, what you do or don't do, why you procrastinate, why you sabotage. And the answers are, that we're getting now, you know, with all the new research, really gives us the ability to be able to be more aware and more in control of our lives than ever before. And so it's a super exciting time to be alive. Hmm, I love that. I love that that mindset shift because I think a lot of people right now are feeling like their brain is sabotaging them. Their anxiety is sabotaging them. Their fear is sabotaging them. I would say people feel right now more than ever that they, they feel stuck. And, you know, I love that the idea is like, actually, there's so much we have in front of us, if we can just tap into it. Can you speak into, you know, how do we begin to shift people who are feeling, especially, you know, we're coming out of the other side of this. I thought when we were having this conversation, I think it was back in May of 2020, we would be on the other side of it by now, but we're, we're still clearly in it. And I feel like people, I mean, every time I look around, I feel like people are just really in a funk what would you, what would you say to, to, to those who are like, I love the idea of it, John, but I don't even know how to get started. Sure. I want to go back just a little bit to point out a couple of things. So first and foremost, some people are in a funk and some people have been thriving through all of this. When we talk about anxiety holds people back, fear holds people back, stress holds people back. Uh, no, it doesn't. Anxiety is an effect of something. Stress is when demand exceeds your current capacity. Um, Fear is an automatic trigger. So where I like to go is not to the effect. I like to go to what's causing the anxiety that's causing you to feel in ways that makes you move away from what you really want to achieve or cause you to feel these emotions that you don't know how to handle and you try to eliminate them or suppress them. What, which part of uh, what's happening in your life is exceeding your current capacity to deal with it, right? So when demand, whether it's financial demand, whether it's relationship demand, children demand, being a a father or a mother demand, being a sister or brother demand, uh, your businesses or your careers, uh, asking more of you than you know how to handle, that's what triggers the stress response. So my question always is, What has to happen for the demand not to exceed your capacity so that the trigger, the circuit, doesn't get activated? Now we're dealing in a whole new domain, right, of higher cortical functioning, which is called thinking. And most people are living at the level of automatic reactions versus the level of awareness and the ability to respond. Those are two different neural circuits in our brain uh, that you and I talked about, I believe, on the last show, right? When, the, when that sympathetic nervous system is activated uh, and a whole bunch of electrical and chemical activity is happening, the emotion that we call it is stress. 
and we fight, flight, or freeze. Well, does the same stress or demand cause the same reaction in every single human being? No. No. Some people have the skill and the habits of dealing with certain things better than others. But these are skills that we can learn. And I like to go to the cause versus the effect. And we live in a world of effects, right? You look at uh, your physique, we can tell a little bit about the cause. You look at your bank account, we can tell a little bit about the cause. You look at your relationship, we can tell a little bit about the cause. (laughs) And so when we want to, you know, have more, be more, experience more, the key for us is to work on the cause so that the effect takes care of itself. Hmm. And by working on the cause, would that be John just becoming, would that first step be becoming more aware, becoming the observer, or would that be, would that be the, cause I think sometimes we don't, we're all caught up in it and we don't, you're right. We're working from a reactive standpoint. We don't realize (laughs) we're not realizing that it's all coming at us all at once. It's amazing how unconscious we can be in these, in these daily moments. Well, the latest research is showing us that 97, 98% of our 6,200 thoughts a day, it's not 35,000, the latest research is about 6,200 thoughts a day, the emotions we have every day, the behaviors we have every day are all subconscious patterns that just get triggered, activated automatically without any thought on yours or my part. 97, 98% of what we think, feel, and do is an automatic habitual pattern. So the question is, if there are results that I just don't want or don't like anymore, or I want to make them better, doesn't it make sense to focus on how do I change you know, the mindset, the emotional management side of it, and the skill set to match the result that I want? And I often have like my Rubik's Cube you know, here you know, on my desk. And um, do we know how to solve the two by two Rubik's Cube? Yeah. Do we know how to solve the three by three? Yeah. Do we know how to solve the four by four? Yeah. And if we want to solve the super complex one, we know how to do it. Now, if you, me, or anybody else doesn't know the algorithm, we could be working really, really, really hard trying to solve it. But if we are committed to solving it, could we learn the algorithm? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So there is a thought and emotional and behavioral algorithm for almost every result that we want to achieve in health, wealth, relations, career, business, finances, et cetera. Now, what most people don't do is stop what they're doing. That's yielding the same results over and over again automatically and learn something new, behave in a different way, and develop the more empowering constructive pattern. And our brain, as you know, works based on three core networks and a bunch of different circuits that turn on or off like a light switch. And the next layer of that is since it's my brain, can I learn how to turn off my anxiety circuit, my self-doubt circuit, my stressed out circuit. Of course you can. That's a skill. It's an awareness first, and it's a skill second. Mm. Right? And no differently than, you know, a firefighter, she learns how to walk into a burning building when everybody's running out. She has to manage her mindset. She has to manage her fear. She has to manage the skills right? It doesn't just happen automatically. And so when we're entering the domain of achievement of life's goals and dreams, sure, there's obstacles, but the obstacles are not the problem. Most people focus on the obstacle versus focusing on what's causing the obstacle and what is the solution. Right. Absolutely. No, we're all stuck. I mean, even I started this conversation and cause I know that people are in the obstacle and it's so hard for us to see past that, you know, I, I, as I connect to so much of my community members and people are struggling and they're in pain or they've got lots of things, like you said, that their capacity, they're past their capacity. They're, they're feeling not so well resourced and they're firing off 
the same patterns over and over and over again. You know, you're, you feel triggered over the same thing. And like you said, it's an automatic response, whether you like it or not, someone does something and bam, you trigger, you know, you're about to choke somebody. Yeah. And, and here's the danger in that, right? Is when we allow these, I'm going to call them, whether it's disempowering or negative or destructive patterns to reinforce themselves guess what happens? We automate them even more. And we actually increase the neurons ability to fire automatically without any thought. And so now we are just in a in this comfort zone that we may be miserable in, but we're comfortable in. Mm. And most people would prefer to manage disappointment versus mastering change. Yeah. There, would you even say it's an, kind of the, you're addicted to those? Of course, we're, we're all addicted. Every human being is an addict. Now we're addicted to constructive, positive, empowering things. And we're addicted to destructive, disempowering, negative things. Now, here is the beautiful thing, right? Uh, one of my friends many years ago, Jim Rohn said, uh, the good news about us humans is we're not trees. We can change. So now when we're getting into the science of change, first I have to make a commitment that I'm going to learn the process of change. And the process of change, as you brilliantly mentioned before, is first I need to be aware that I am operating mostly in an unconscious, triggered pattern recognition lifestyle, which means there's trigger behavior and result, trigger behavior, result, trigger behavior, result. And Just thinking about changing doesn't change us, right? Just reading about it doesn't change us. Just watching a a podcast like this doesn't change us. It gives us awareness, maybe maybe a little bit of knowledge. But when we start to get into how did I develop the patterns that just run my life? And the answer was through space repetition. The answer was, you know, through not just the knowledge and the skills that I learned, but the meanings that I gave things, the the things that I was told. You know, listen, I I love to use this analogy that my friend Nierka gave me many, many years ago. At one time in uh, many of our lives, we believed in the tooth fairy, right? And at one time in our life, we may have even believed in Santa Claus, right? And we, we were certain that Santa Claus and the tooth fairy existed. But that was a lie. It was a lie. Let's right? talk it about that. No, it was a lie, but we believed it. Yes. And as we got older, we had new information and new facts. We realized that's a lie and we let it go. Some well, of us what, not as easily as others. Of you course. <laughs> well, what if some of the things that we believe about ourselves are lies? Yeah. What about some of the things we believe about what's happening out there is a lie that because of that, I can't this Mm -hmm. because of him, because of her, because of COVID, because of the marketplace, because of the interest rates being too high or too low, because of that, I can't this. So how much of our belief system drives our perception and behavior? And the answer is a ton, right? And so we have limiting beliefs, beliefs that limit us. We're limited even though we have so much potential. And when we're dealing with, again, the human brain, right, you cannot create one if you had $100 billion to spend on creating one right now. It is so powerful, so complex, but here's what you can do. You can learn to be a better operator of the brain that you already own, and every single brain functionally works the same. Is it possible that mindset is what separates the best from the rest? Is it possible that we can upgrade our mindset skills? And I'm not just talking about having a a positive mental attitude. There are plenty of people who have a positive mental attitude that are out of shape, out of integrity, out of a great relationship, are broke, aren't successful, but they have a positive mental attitude. So my question really is, What is really holding you back? And are you committed to learning how to let that go? And there's usually only four things that hold us back. 
And when we talk about the circuits in the brain, right, circuits in the brain that turn on motivation or turn off motivation, uh, turn on awareness or turn off awareness, uh, activate the spiritual centers in our brain where we feel one with that which created us, turn on the fear circuit or stress circuit or anxiety circuit or panic circuit or, uh, or doubt circuit, if those circuits are turning on because of certain things, could we, right, you, me, could we learn to recognize them, part one, could we learn, right, to reframe the things that are disempowering us, so recognize, reframe, could we learn to release, to turn off, okay, the circuits that hold us back, and can we retrain our brain to turn on the circuits that will cause motivation and behavior towards what we want? That little process that I just went through is called the 4R process. Recognize, reframe, release, and retrain. That's a skill. Mm. Like brushing your teeth is a skill. Like playing tennis or checkers or knitting is a skill. So is that. Mm. And if it's true, and it is, that the smallest, shortest, easiest, fastest path from where you are to where you want to get to is in between your ears by managing that properly, then every single person can recognize what's holding them back, release what's holding them back, create a plan for doing something different, and then reinforcing that new pattern so that the same trigger, the same thing doesn't hold them back. And listen, I've seen it in hundreds of thousands of my students. When they learn that they're not victims of their brain, that, I mean, they are if they don't know how to use it because their brain just runs these automatic patterns. Like I said, some are positive, some are not. When they just start having this awareness of, I have this incredible bio computer that I own, no mortgage on it, and I just need to learn how to use it better. With some small shifts, we can see, you know, the little hinges that swing the big doors wide open. And uh, so this is the fun part. This is why I love to, to talk with you and your audiences is let's start with a state of awareness that I have the ability within me to overcome whatever is holding me back and to level up my uh, success in any area of my life. That, I mean, it's what we're all looking for, right, John? It's what we're all looking for. And, you know, with, with the capacity of what our brain, and we don't even really still don't understand the full capacity of what our brain can do, but the fact that we can go and change the way that we think, the way that we can reprogram how we operate, um, knowing that, and yet still seeing millions upon millions of people still getting stuck in their stuff. John is one of the reasons for that is one people not knowing it, or it's the not practicing the, the four R's. Well, it's a, well, the four R's is one technique, right? But number one, not knowing uh, a, a lot of times, listen, like, you know, we're, we're in our lives, we're busy, you know, we're, we're fathers, we're mothers, we're uh, husbands, we're you know, wives, uh, we're, we're in, when life is complex. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. And very few people, I find, you know, take the time to stop. I mean, just stop and go, hmm, what's going on in my life? Am I on track? Am I off track? Am I doing the things that give my life the most purpose and meaning? Do I have the right thought patterns? Do I have the right uh, skills? Do I know the right behaviors that what do I should do? Do I have the right habits? Do I know how to let go of this and start that? That means it's like just taking time to stop and be and use our brain a little bit better. But what most people do is they, they get on this treadmill of life and they don't come off to reflect, to recalibrate, to reshape, rescript, right? their lives, and they just keep repeating year after year, decade after decade, patterns that are limiting them. And most people don't really know that there actually is an easier, better, faster way. I was just thinking about the busyness of things. Like right before this call, I was, I was pumping for the baby. Then I ran in, saw the baby, gave the baby, he had raspberry 
stuff all over his face puree and gave him a little kiss. He tried to put his little hands all over my face and then ran in here. And then like, you saw me take that deep breath and set an intention for this, that pause, because it was so easy for me to just run in and run into, into the meeting room. Just, and I think, you know, so op, that's just, that's how people's lives are, you know, without taking a moment to like ground in, you know, what is my intention for this moment? What is my intention for this conversation? How do I want to show up for my audience? You know, like the, just asking these types of questions, you know, is it something as simple as that, that kind of stopping in that moment? It's a great start. Yeah. I wrote a, a best-selling book that you're aware of called Inner Size. Inner sizes are mental and emotional techniques that strengthen our mind and our mindset and emotional control. And one of, there's two inner sizes I always teach is my foundational inner size. There's nine of them, but there's two. Uh, one is called Take Six, Calm the Circuits. And what we know is if you just maybe once per hour, just once an hour for three minutes, you stop anytime in the hour, and you took six deep breaths as slowly as you could into your nose, just six deep breaths, just. Hold it at the top for two or three seconds. And then as you breathe out, you breathe out like you're breathing out through a straw and take your attention and energy and focus it on the airflow coming out through the straw. And just feel the pressure down and breathe in again. Hold at the top and then breathe out. Now, if we just did that, just that once per hour, we would deactivate the sympathetic nervous system, the, the fight, flight, freeze, anxious, nervous, agitated, doubtful, stressful part of our brain, and we'd activate the calm to respond part of our brain. And what if we did what I call as inner size number two, AIA, A-I-A. What if in a calm, relaxed state where I can respond, I asked myself this question, for the last hour, have, been, have my thoughts been positive, constructive? Has my state been that of being courageous? Has my state been that of productivity or activity? Has my state been conducive to achieving my health, wealth, relationship, career, business, motherhood, good, whatever it is? Yes or no, binary. And if we focused on our thoughts, emotions, feelings, sensations, and behaviors for the last hour as an observer without, and this is critical, without judging ourselves, blaming ourselves, shaming ourselves, guilty feelings, or justification. So no blame, shame, guilt, or justification, just awareness. And what if we said, and that's the A in Aya, awareness. And then what if in the very next nanosecond, I said, well, what's my intention for the next hour? My intention is to be focused. My intention is to be happy. My intention is to be productive. My intention is to get this done. So great. Now I have an intention. Now I've redirected my focus. Right? So I let go of whatever I needed to. I was aware of a pattern. And then I redirected my focus. And I said, okay, great. To get the next hour started, what's one action step? Not 10, one. I want to reduce it to the ridiculous so I reduce the resistance to my behavior. So now those two inner sizes strengthen my awareness, strengthen my intention, strengthen my direction and my self-confidence and certainty to direct my behavior. Now, if I did that 10 times a day, and if I did that seven days a week, what do you think my brain would be doing? My brain would say, hmm, you're investing some energy doing this awareness thing and this intention thing and this behavior thing that you're directing to high productivity behaviors. Since my brain likes to automate things that I do on a regular basis, and it doesn't care if it's constructive or destructive, whether it's good for you or bad for you, it just says you're doing this. I'm going to, I'm going to create a repetitive uh, hab habitual pattern. Do you think maybe you would start to be more aware every hour? Do you think maybe you would start to set 
the right intentions every hour? Do you think maybe you'd start to take the right actions every hour? And do you think those positive, constructive, empowering patterns would build upon themselves and create more positive, empowering, constructive patterns? Not only is the answer an big, huge yes, Mm -hmm. but our brain is paying attention to the patterns that we reinforce. And any pattern we reinforce, our brain automates. Mm -hmm. So if you're earning 20,000 a year or 20,000 a month or 20,000 an hour, your brain automates the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors to make that your reality. So there's very little thought that has to go into it. So if you want a different result, whether it's financial, relationship, physique, whatever, if we interrupt a pattern long enough, and we create and reinforce a new pattern long enough, which is between 66 days and 365 days, now who's in control? Now who's being deliberate? Now who is consciously evolving themselves? Absolutely. And then, yeah, you, you've changed your trajectory. I mean, I don't be by changing your brain. You got it. Mm-hmm. And this is why we can change our brain to change our lives. Now, in order to do that, it's really nice to be able to say, oh, wow, that sounds great. High five. Wow, I really like that. Yeah, right. right. Which um, is what a that, lot of people do. But, but that doesn't change anything other than your awareness. Oh, I've heard of this before. Wow. And so how do we reduce it to the ridiculously small to do it? So first, we have to make a decision. Yes. Do I want to be more in control of my life? Do I want to be healthier, happier, wealthier? Yes, I do. The next question I ask every one of my students, are you interested in that that, or are you committed? Yeah, it's a decision. Right. So if I'm interested, I'm going to do what's easy and convenient. If I'm committed, I'm going to do whatever it takes. So if you're interested, don't even start because you'll disappoint yourself. And then you will set up a neural pattern of disappointment avoidance. And if you want to really achieve a different result in your life, make a decision to be committed to going through the change process long enough for the new you, the new thought, emotional, behavioral pattern called you then builds itself and you. Is there a, John, is there, I know people are like, well, what, what's the magic number? Yeah. All of my students commit to 100 days, a hundred days. The, the university of London came with some research um, that said it takes between 66 days to 365 days to interrupt an old pattern, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a fear pattern, a self-image, I don't feel good enough, smart enough, worthy enough, limiting beliefs, um, a little bit less, but to interrupt an old habitual pattern that we've had for years, 66 to 365 days. And so my question for people is, would you invest a little bit of time each day for 100 days to build a pattern that you can use and reinforce for the rest of your life to create the masterpiece that you actually dream about in your life. Mm. Stop, stop worrying, stop being stressed and stop having, you know, being anxious, stop, stop having fears and feel like you're not good enough, smart enough or worthy enough. Would you invest a hundred days? You know, it's like saying to somebody, would you invest a hundred days in exercise to get the path going to be healthy for the rest of your life. It's like, oh my God, of course I would. To have more mental control, emotional control, more focus, more awareness, to be able to achieve what you want faster and easier. Not fast and easy, faster and easier. I love that. John, I have a quick question for you on that. Because I think about all the different pathways, a lot of different areas that people want to focus on. I want to make more money. I want to be healthier. I want want to, you know, love my body more. I want to, you know, go into my dream career, whatever those pathways, you know, you're thinking about the different goals people have. And what I want to know is by taking, let's say two of the nine inner sizes, or we we get inner size, I highly recommend everyone get it. The link will be in the show notes for this episode, because this book is phenomenal. And let's say, because if we dial it down to just the one thing to make it so, so easy that we say, yes. So let's say someone's like, you know what? Health is on the docket. It's the most important because without my health, I really can't do a lot of these other things. I don't have the energy for it. Let's just say, and for my audience, health is definitely a big area by, by leveraging these exercises to move in the direction of more health. Are there the size? 
side benefits, clearly you're changing your brain, right? The side benefits of, I can also move this towards greater income. I can move this towards, you know, living my passion, traveling the world, whatever those things are by, would you recommend focusing on one you know, if the, if there was a goal attached to the inner, the, the working of the exercises that we're doing, then, then moving forward onto the side benefits of the other things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once you learn the process, mm-hmm. right. I've used, you know, the process and my personal high level process is your mindset plus your skill set and your action set plus your environment equals predictable re- transformations and results. So my question is, well, what would I have to do to have the right mindset to achieve my health goals? What skill set would I need to augment in order to achieve my health goals? What actions would I need to take daily, weekly, monthly to achieve my health goals? What environment would I need to be in to make the goals that I want to achieve easier? Right. And so, you know, each one of those has got a few other layers to that. Right. But mindset, skill set, action set, environment, th- those are the four things that if I focused on that every single day, I've used the, the, the methodologies that, that I've used for, you know, 40 uh, years uh, for my health, for my relationship, for my career, for my business, for my income. Um, once you understand the process of how your brain works, uh, the beautiful thing about our brain is that. It can process, processes 400 billion bits of information per second. So you can't really overload the brain. You can overload the conscious, you know, working memory part of the brain, uh, but you're not going to overload the overall capacity of the brain. And when you understand how to use your conscious thinking brain, imagination brain properly for what it needs to be used for, and you allow the other parts of your brain, you know, to do the work that they need to do, because We have different parts of our brain, just like we have different members of an orchestra doing different Mm -hmm. playing music, but different instruments, Um, then it becomes a little bit easier. So I suggest to be able to say, yeah, take one area of your life. And if you want to focus on greater health, then put your time, energy and attention and prove to yourself that with focus, you can achieve your goals and with commitment, focus and commitment, right? You can achieve those goals. Then you say, wow. Can I use this to have a better relationship? Of course you can. Can I use this to make more money, to grow a business, to become a coach, to write a book, to fill, fill in the blank? Yeah. yeah, the goal achieving process inquires both conscious choices and decisions, but it also requires a change in behavior. And behavior is where the game is won or lost, the execution. But there's a, two different types of behaviors. There's conscious behaviors, and then there's unconscious behaviors, right? Because we can decide, you know what? I'm going to eat better today at lunch or dinner. I'm not going to have that extra glass of wine or wine at all. I'm not going to have any sugar. I'm going to go for a 15 or 30 minute walk. But that doesn't change anything other than for that time frame. When we're looking at sustainable, long-term results, we have to enter the domain of habits. Talk about thought habits, emotional habits, and behaviors that cause results. So if we want to stop playing on the surface and go a little bit deeper into the water and you know get our head underneath the surface, uh, there's a, a magical world to discover there. Hmm, I love that. Cause I think people, you know, they think about habits in terms of action and conscious action, but yeah, there are emotional habits. There's a lot of, and these are the hijackers, you know, or the, you know, the, the, uh, the habits that can actually undermine us. If we're not mindful, we don't see that coming. We don't do, do the work. And I know that that's a whole nother layer of, of what we're talking about today. And so I wanted to just ask, you know, if we start to do, we start to be mindful about the decisions that we're making, the, the patterns that we're falling on and reprogramming those, you know, how, you know, and what direction can that take us? And the, one of the reasons why I asked you on to the show one, because I know so many people are at that tipping point of where they're just like, I've got, 
I've got to make changes with this, this brain of mine. I know that there's capacity for this. I've read the books. I've, I've listened to a podcast episode, but I just need to know where to start. And then most importantly, you, you have events that you do every single year. One of them that I've absolutely loved is the brain thon and that's coming up. And, and I know every, every year there's a theme. And although this is podcast particularly is focused on health, the big part of this, ep- this particular theme this year is income and basically pro- how we create prosperity for ourselves. Yeah. So I agree. Like when I look at health, like I have my goals, I have spiritual health, emotional health, mental health, physical health, financial health. Right. So if we looked at our finances, how much we earn, how much wealth we have, how much debt we have, our assets, that'll tell a story. Right. And we know that, you know, on planet Earth, we need a certain amount of money. That money is a tool that can give us some freedoms, choice, freedom, emotional freedom, hopefully some, uh, you know, freedoms to, to, to help others. And the more we can earn, uh, the more we can do really financial health around earning, managing, investing, protecting, getting out of debt so that people can have more peace of mind and to be able to contribute and have more impact. And especially after the year, a year and a half that we've had, uh, our clients and followers have been begging us, you know, for more stuff about how do I get ahead so I can retire, you know, the way I want to without the stress of maybe not having enough and having more than enough for myself, but for others too. 100%. I think we're all there. And I think I want to just, just take a moment and point out that absolutely, you know, so many of the amazing women are listening here are, are incredible heart centered women. And I think about when we have money in the hands of people that are heart centered, that are service driven, how much we can do in the world, you know, that's how, that's how we create the biggest impact. Um, but I know that we, you know, so first we got to get through the, the mindset shifts. We got to get through the, you know, uh, getting ourselves to a place where we feel great. And then, you know, then we can start, we get to start creating that impact as well. And so I love how, you know, how we can retrain our brain to really create the mental, the mental health, the emotional well being, the physical well being, you know, whatever, whatever passions that you have, the financial well being, we get to have that. And that you have an event that's specifically geared towards utilizing the tools that you use and you educate on every single day to really focus in on the financial health, the financial well being. Now, how do we get, how do we get set up? How do we get to participate? So number one, it's a free event that I do with uh, other brain and success experts. So this year, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a link to give everybody in the, in the notes down below somewhere this year, the theme is change your brain, change your income and really change your wealth so that you have, you know, more peace of mind and more choice freedom. And with me will be Dr. Lisa Feldman Barrett, who is the uh, professor extraordinaire at Northeastern University, focusing on, she's a neuroscientist and neuropsychologist and serves on Harvard Medical as well. And she'll be talking about how to use your brain to achieve your dream life. I've got Dr. John Demartini on with me this year. I've got Jack Canfield, who many people know as the founder of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And he's been around for over 50 years teaching, you know, the success principles and the mindset principles. This year, Lisa Nichols will be joining me. And she was on, uh, you know, on in the movie, The Secret with me as well. And she's a rock star, really changing her mindset, changing her brain to achieve the level of success that she's had. Uh, Marissa Peer is going to be on this year. And she's just a powerhouse of understanding, you know, the subconscious mind and hypnotherapy and auto suggestion. She's worked with athletes, uh, uh, actors, uh, royalty, uh, as well in the hypnotherapy space. And I'll be doing a session as well. And we're going to be sharing this stuff for free on, you know, how do you really let go of the obstacles that are holding you back? How do you change your brain so you can have more, you know, personal impact? Um, and uh, how do you earn more income? And how do you get out of debt? And how do you live more of the lifestyle you want to live? And so we'll give you the link. Uh, it's the ninth annual Brainathon. We do this, you know, we, we have this one big launch uh, each year. And we're inviting all of your uh, followers and people who are watching and listening to us. And um, we'll give them the link and let them show up. And we do that. We do it for a whole day. So the people come for two or three or four hours. We have so many people that just stay the whole day because this is like their ninth one they're going to be on this year. It's so powerful. And we don't charge, you know, we probably could charge a thousand dollars for the day if we wanted to, but we do this as um, part of how we 
share the research with the world and how we help people. Mm, I love it. And I love that this, this feels like, you know, for so many of us, that first step, and I think that's what it is, is, you know, we have this vision, we, we, we know that there's capacity for it, but we just don't know how to begin. And that's what I, I, I so appreciate about you, John, is that you have given us so many tools, you know, in, in the books and the programs and, and what you created about taking that first step. Cause I think that's the hardest one to take, you know, cause we just don't, sometimes we don't know what to do. So I'm so excited about this. I'm going to be attending. I'm super stoked. I'm going to have the link in the show notes as well. And I just want to say, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for asking the questions, you know, as you, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, my head's just nodding. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, cause that's the thing we all live in this, this want for that transformation. And it's just a matter of, of taking that first step. And that's what you do. That's what you do so well. Thank you. So great to be with you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs>